Hello and welcome to HDMI's podcast. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Stephanie Hafner, the Executive Assistant Manager of Rooms Division from the Hotel Arts in Barcelona, um, a five-star luxury hotel which is managed by Ritz Colton. Stephanie also has the honor of sitting on our Hospitality Industry Leaders Advisory Board. Hello Stephanie and welcome to HDMI. Thank you Anthony, it's a great pleasure to be here. What do you think is the importance of hospitality education? I think it's uh, important to have a basic set of knowledge about uh, the different uh, areas within the hotel industry, hospitality industry. Um, because as you move along, you will always be able to get back to that and apply it in the different uh, positions that, uh, that you will be in. Because the environment itself is ever-changing and uh, you will be able to apply in different situations and occasions the basic skill sets that you have learned in, uh, in your hospitality education. So from your point of view, um, what should hospitality management schools be doing to prepare students? Um, and I'm not speaking about the whole industry, yeah. specifically if someone was very interested in going into rooms division, mm -hmm. housekeeping, front office. What what should we be doing to prepare our graduates? Mm. I think on one side, like mentioned before, you need to know about uh, finances, you need to bo know about marketing, about uh, management skills and so on. But aside from that, I think it is important to transmit during the education that uh, it requires a big passion for what you're doing because it's very, very hard work. And uh, you need to be at the same time very organized and very efficient but also a person who truly loves the human interaction. Um, it needs to be transmitted that your goal on a daily basis, especially within the rooms division and when you are in the front of house or even housekeeping, is to, uh, I like to use the phrase, to touch the heart of our guests. This is uh, what we need to make sure that the students understand the goal is to make the guest feel special. So in a hospitality institute, you're saying we should be teaching them the, the necessary man management skills, the theory skills. How important do you think it is that they also have the basic operational and practical skills um, of how a front office performs? I think the very basics are necessary, but then I think there is a uh, at least on our f on a five star luxury level what I have so far experienced, these are things we can always teach and each hotel may have a slightly different uh, way to operate right. uh, their department. So this is always something we can train, we can, no, we can get there, but uh, this overall uh, attitude and uh, the approach to the guest is what really makes uh, the difference. So from an industry professional such as yourself, what advice do you think H an institute like HTMI could take from yourself? I think that um, it is important to have a lot of uh, interactive work groups so that uh, the personal skills can be developed and uh, also it is very important to get uh, already practical exposure throughout the studies to uh, do the uh, internship placements to really get into the daily work environment to become a clear to, be, to gain a clear understanding of what uh, hospitality industry is all about. You previously mentioned some of the skills that a student would need for rooms division, such as understanding the financial aspects, the planning, the forecasting, but also the, the people skills. Are there any other skills that you think are very important if a student decided that was the route they wanted to go, rooms division? I think that, uh, of course, the general leadership skills, if this is uh, where you want to go to, if you want to develop to uh, an executive level, are also extremely important. No? How, to, how do I manage a more complicated situation? How do I deal with a problem? How, uh, how am I flexible enough to react uh, to different situations that occur every few minutes in a yes. hotel? No? So it is uh, open-mindedness as well, which is uh, very much needed and uh, to, to be able to think outside the box and to see the bigger picture. And uh, 
yeah, just to be extremely also flexible. Those are some fascinating points. I particularly like the one thinking out the box, being flexible, because you know, guests. Every guest is different. Mm -hmm. um, from a managerial point of view, mm -hmm. what sort of responsibilities would you say a rooms division manager, a front office manager, would perform on a daily basis in a hotel? Uh, speaking from my own experience, I think. Uh, Part of the responsibilities, of course, are administrative. You, know, you need to, you have a certain amount of emails you have to get back to, you have uh, certain projects that you need to be working on on a daily basis. But uh, I think uh, two extremely important things are one, development of the ladies and gentlemen that work in your area to help them grow, to help them learn, to, to develop them into future leaders. This is a uh, big part of the responsibilities and of course uh, to make sure that every single guest that walks into the hotel has uh, the experience of a lifetime and will want to come back so it has to do a lot with uh, both things as well as the development as well as the guest experience is related to being present in the operational area to be interacting with the guests to be interacting with the ladies and gentlemen that you work with so from your experience, what sort of management or leadership skills would a person need? You mentioned administrative skills, the guest contact skills, but what, what are the type of the management skills or the leadership skills one would need to develop or have you know, to reach a high level within the rooms division management department? Um. I think one is like I mentioned the being able to uh, use your time efficiently mm -hmm. in order to be able to really get everything done in a day then uh, it is also the being able to take a decision getting straight to the point um, and I think patience is uh, also extremely important and uh, at the same time to um, to love to teach I mean even though it is not a school I think right. still it uh, it's what you do on a daily basis you show people how to become better okay. so training is an important element of the job absolutely absolutely because Ritz Colton has a fascinating motto you know, uh, we are ladies and gentlemen treating ladies and gentlemen how would you say, if one sort of applied that motto in other types of five-star hotels, what are the important elements? I mean, of course, motivation is an important part, mm. you know, because your employees are the ladies and gentlemen. Mm. But what other important elements do staff need to have to treat the guests as ladies and gentlemen? What are the, the um, other elements <coughs> of that service, the hospitality that mm. we are providing? I think they need to feel the support of their leaders. They need to feel that uh, they are empowered to take their decisions. They, um, they need to be themselves treated as ladies and gentlemen in order to be able to represent this to our guests. And they just need to uh, be confident about what they're doing. And we as uh, the senior leaders need to ensure that we provide them the tools and the knowledge and the support that they need in order to be able to transform that into the service that they give to the guest in the end. Um, I mean, you know, even in the best hotels, things go wrong. Yeah, and absolutely. Unfortunately, we have guest complaints. Mm. In your opinion, how important do you think guest complaints are to a hotel? And how important is it, especially from a management point of view, how we handle or take that complaint seriously? Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's crucial. And it's one of the things that when we have uh, new employee orientation, we always touch on this subject. Mm -hmm. no? Because um, I think Ritz-Carlton is very well known for uh, empowerment. What uh, we don't like to have the chain of reporting where a complaint comes in and then the supervisor needs to be called and the manager and the director and so on. We really like to uh, resolve the problem at, 
at that very moment, no? And and uh, one of the things we teach is that we need to be thankful for every uh, feedback that we get from the guest, even if it is a problem, even if it is a negative comment, because it it gives us the chance to make it right. And uh, if they would say nothing and just leave, it would be much worse for us. So we really uh, encourage everybody to gather feedback from the guests and to resolve those problems immediately, because in the end, it can create confidence. No, the guest will trust us because he sees it has been resolved properly and he will feel, oh wow, Stephanie really took care of me. And uh, this will, uh, in the end, create loyalty. An interesting question, because this is something we teach you. You know, all hotels, they have, whether you call it your guest relations, your guest mm -hmm. services department, mm -hmm. you know, the job is during the guest stay, we look after the guests, we find out, you know, how they're enjoying the stay, time of checkout, we ask the guest, did you enjoy your stay? And we teach our students, one, for example, one should never say to a guest, was everything okay in your stay? Mm. Or do you have a complaint? Because the message you're giving is you're expecting it. Mm. So from your experience, when you want to get something out of the guest, whether it's a negative or a positive, mm. how would you sort of advise people to phrase that type of question? You may, you may know that there's something wrong with the guest, you may not know. Mm. I think a lot may come also out of informal interaction with the guest because you may meet the guest at the door as he comes back from a day in the city or you may meet them in the lobby on the way out to dinner and I think uh, if you just ask a very uh, informal how was your day, what have you been up to, I think you will start a conversation and if the guest feels comfortable he will tell you what was wrong. Yeah. No? Now in the good old days before we had computers and we had you know, our websites like TripAdvisor and Twitter and Facebook, they say that a happy guest went and told three people mm -hmm. and an un unhappy guest told ten. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, today, through a lot of these social media sites like TripAdvisors, they're going and leaving comments and they're basically telling two million people. Mm -hmm. And the sad part of that is a lot of people make decisions on you know, do I buy this product, do I stay in the hotel, based on the comments or the percentage of positive or negative comments that other guests have left. Mm. Um, how important do you think it is from a management point of view? How serious do we need to take these social media sites? And what, if a guest should leave a negative comment, what do, do you do as management regarding that particular comment? Mm. I mean, for sure nowadays, this is a, it is a fact that cannot be changed. So we need to make the best of it now. And it is something that really a lot of people look after. And it is taken serious by uh, the management as well as by owners of hotels. Every, I mean, everybody looks at this now. So um, I think that uh, if there is negative comments, it needs to be looked at and it needs to be uh, made sure that it is corrected, no? the, whatever went wrong or whatever in the comment is mentioned that is not uh, functioning properly. And at the same time, I think it's just to, to, to create, create so many more positive memories for the guests mm -hmm. and to really create so many more special situations and experience for them that they will feel compelled, I really have to put it on that site. 